Good morning, friends. Welcome back or welcome to Acre Homestead. My name is Beck. It is May 2nd, and today I'm actually going to be filming, in quotes, our April garden tour. I did not realize how fast this year was flying by, and I totally missed filming an April garden tour video. So we are going to go ahead and do that today. Now, I got up extra early to film this because I am off to breakfast with one of my friends, and so I wanted to get out here and film it before hopefully my neighbor's dogs get out and start barking. It's beautiful. It's really nice out here right now, It's and the sounds of the birds are really nice. So let's just get right into it. It's looking very lush and gorgeous out here. There's a lot of changes since last time you were here. There is some really exciting successes and some pretty major failures. I am going to go into one of the most devastating failures in my garden journey so far and I'm sure I'm not alone so I want to make sure I share that with you and we can talk about it together. So first off in this potato bed two days ago I noticed that there are potatoes that are sprouting. They're looking really good. And they're coming up all the way down there as well. One thing I want to show you along this potato bed are these mushrooms. This is really encouraging to me. These are not edible mushrooms. But I have two boxes of wine cap mushrooms on my patio that I really need to get planted. I ordered them like a month and a half ago and they've just been sitting there. And seeing this mushroom growth here is super encouraging because that means that I can get mushrooms to grow in this wood chip mulch. That's what I plan to do is plant the mycelium to grow in wood chips and I've got a lot of wood chips. So that's something I really need to get planted really soon. So let's go into the back of the garden and let's work our way this way. I'm gonna get to the devastating news when we get up here. So I'm gonna give a different perspective of where my garden is so you can kind of get a different viewpoint. This area back here is kind of embarrassing and it's a project that needs to get to. I need to wood chip all this area and we are gonna eventually turn this into a chicken run. But for now, I'm focusing on these two beds here. These beds have been problem areas for me because they get so much shade due to these trees. I tried growing a bunch of different things in these beds and I couldn't get hardly anything to grow. The only thing that grew and actually grew really well was kale. You can kind of see those little spindly sticks there. I grew some baby kale right along there and it thrived and actually survived the winter and it came back. But these beds got terribly weedy. I can show you a before picture. So what I'm doing is I'm putting these chickens to work. I'm going to be creating two beds that are 100% kale. Kale is my chicken's favorite vegetable. They love brassicas. And so what I've decided to do because I know I can grow kale in these beds and I don't want this space to go to waste. I'm going to plant these two beds out for kale just for the chickens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze a ton of it and so that they'll have fresh greens all winter. That was one thing that they didn't have much of last winter was fresh greens. And so if I can create two beds that are, that are just food for the chickens, I would love to do that. One, it'll help supplement their chicken feed bill, but two, it'll give them really good greens and vitamins in the winter. Plus they love it. This is a chicken run I built for them when they were chicks and it's completely dilapidated, it's breaking apart, but I had it just storing behind this shed. And so I figured because this whole area was just covered in weeds yesterday, this out and put it on here and let my chickens weed it because I'm busy. And so I'm gonna let them work for their food. Moving on from these two beds, we're gonna go over here into the asparagus and strawberry bed. And this is so fun. I love growing asparagus. Look at this. I just had to go switch out a chicken because one of them was quacking in there and I thought she had to lay an egg and she did. So I put her back in there and I brought one out and now they're a lot happier because she wanted to go lay an egg. So anyway, we're gonna try this. I definitely decided I really like raw asparagus. I've never eaten raw asparagus until last week and it's really good. It's got a really fresh flavor and it doesn't have, you know, asparagus kind of has that funkiness. Raw asparagus doesn't really have that. I think it'd be really good if I made some homemade ranch dip and dipped this in there. I think it'd be delicious. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. It's huge and disgusting. Oh, this is what I have to deal with. This is actually the biggest snail I've ever seen. Snails and slugs are my nemesis and I, it's so big I feel bad killing it. For some reason when the bigger the bug is, the more guilt I have about killing it and that thing needs to go. I've decided I'm gonna give it to the chickens. I don't know if they'll eat it because they don't love eating slugs. Oh! <laughs> oh, I don't think they're gonna eat it. If they don't eat it, it has to go. And this right here is slug damage. They completely ate half of this asparagus spear. 
I do have a couple examples out here of how slugs are very destructive and what they've already destroyed in the garden. It's been really dry, so I haven't really had to worry about it, but we just started getting rain. Being dry for us is very abnormal. It's been one of the driest springs on record. And it just started raining the last week, and so I'm just starting to see the slugs come out. And so I have a couple things that I am doing to help prevent that. I did buy Sluggo, and I'm gonna try the beer trick. I just haven't gotten out here to do it yet. And I think my strawberry asparagus bed is gonna be a perfect bed to try that beer experiment with because my strawberries are just starting to flower and I really don't want the slugs to eat my strawberries. They love strawberries and I love strawberries and I want them and I'm not growing strawberries for slugs. This strawberry asparagus bed I put in last year and I planted two year old roots. I'm surprised that I'm even able to get any asparagus out of here. Last year they were a fraction of the size they are this year. So I'm definitely not picking all the asparagus you can see here. This one was really thin and spindly, so I'm gonna let this one go to seed, but I am picking a few of them and it's super exciting because I didn't think I was gonna be able to get any asparagus for a few years. And then coming over here to the potato bed that I planted, this was a potato bed I planted from seed potatoes that I had saved. These are purple majesty potatoes in here. And I'm not seeing any life pop up out of this bed. A few of you guys had mentioned to me that maybe the seed potatoes were a little too far gone. So I'm not sure if anything's gonna happen. I might come out here this afternoon and try to dig up a seed potato and see if I can find one because it's been like a month, I think. I can't remember the exact date. I can insert it here and tell you the date I planted these potatoes. And then moving on over here, this is cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. I don't know if some of these are gonna do anything I did have some chicken trauma to some of them. Sorry, my my hen is laying an egg, so excuse the racket. <laughs> so I like to let the chickens run in this run quite a bit. And so at night what I'll do is I'll let them out and I let them free range for a while and they love trying to attack this bed. So I've kind of given up on this section. So I just opened the chicken coop and I found a chicken eating an egg. That's a big deal. Um, I don't know what to do about that. I know which chicken it is. Um, oh man, what do I do? So I'm not gonna kill a chicken for eating an egg. Um, just not gonna do it. And can chickens teach other chickens to eat eggs? Is that something that can happen? Because I get plenty of eggs for my husband and I. I get way too many eggs, way too many eggs. We have 11 chickens and there's just two of us, so I'm constantly giving them away, which I love being able, excuse you, quiet. I'm a little irritated now, which I love being, which I love, which I love being able to do, but I really, so what, my, what I'm saying is that if I have a chicken that eats eggs, I'm not really that worried about it because I have enough to share, but I can't have chickens teaching other chickens to eat eggs. So tell me what to do. So let's go ahead and get back to the garden tour. I'm gonna process that and think about that later. The good thing is I know which chicken is doing it. So in here, I do have some beets planted between the cauliflower and Brussels sprouts so that I could try to maximize the harvest in here. So I'm thinking I might give up on this section and plant something else here because these Brussels sprouts have just experienced way too much damage. Those are the eggs that I saved from Miss Chicken Eater. And then coming over here, I've got some celery some of the leaves on the outside aren't looking super healthy, but there's a lot of new growth on the inside of them. This is Chinese pink celery and this is Utah tall celery. So even though there's some yellowing kind of not healthy looking leaves, I think these are gonna grow just fine. And coming right across from it, I planted some dragon tongue beans and those are starting to come up. And it looks like somebody pulled this one out of the ground. So I don't know if this is gonna do anything, but we'll just put you right back in there. We'll follow this guy and see if anything happens with him, but he probably won't survive. And then I have some sugar snap peas coming here and coming right across, I also planted some sugar snap peas right in here. And I'm thinking, I found this yesterday. I think that's a volunteer potato. I had potatoes in this bed last year. And so I'm gonna let that go and see what happens with that. I'm thrilled with how this bed is starting to look. In this bed, I have red cabbage, broccoli, those two I bought from starts and they're looking very healthy. I have a few broccoli starts that don't look super great that I started. Two of them actually already bolted. So I went ahead in those areas and pulled those up. And right in here, I planted some Swiss chard. From here to here, I have my cabbage starts. Those were ones that I started and they're looking really healthy. And then coming down here, 
I've got my kale plants that I started from seed and those are looking really healthy too. Along the edge on this side and along that side, I have spinach. Also between the kales, I planted a few black beans just for an experiment because I know I'm gonna be harvesting around the outside leaves. And so the kales get really tall and skinny. So there's plenty of room around them. So I figured I would try to throw something in there to see if I could grow it. And I don't see any of them coming up yet but we'll see what happens. And then these are those onions that were volunteers from last year. And I actually have some volunteers growing in the walkway as well. I have fallen in love with volunteer plants. I wanna let any volunteer plant that's gonna grow, grow because it's zero effort on my part. I actually have tomato volunteers growing all over here and I'm obviously not gonna let all the tomato volunteers thrive and grow, but I'm gonna let a few of them and we'll just see what happens with them. I've got a few in this bed. I don't think, oh, this is a black bean right here actually that sprouted. And these are black beans that I saved seed from last year. So this is super fun. This was the first thing I got to plant from seed that I saved myself. And then over here, I have some volunteer tomatoes. I don't think I'm gonna let these volunteer tomatoes grow because this bed doesn't get too much sun. But I've got a couple other volunteer tomato plants that I think I'm gonna let go. And there's some more mushrooms there. If nature can do it, hopefully I can get my edible mushrooms to grow too. And then here we have what's going to be my sweet potato bed. I've got it all prepped and ready to go. The only two things in it right now, there's a volunteer potato plant. This whole bed was potatoes last year. And I'm gonna let that volunteer potato plant go because it's looking really healthy and doing better than any of the potato plants I planted so far. And then I've got some more volunteer tomatoes and I probably won't let those do anything, but for now they're just hanging out. Now I have this idea because this volunteer potato plant sprouted first and it's looking really healthy, can you winter sow potatoes? So when I go to harvest all my potatoes, could I leave potatoes behind in hopes that they will then grow next year and I won't have to plant them when the season begins? So basically pull out the potatoes I wanna keep and then go through and just leave some behind and have them planted for next year. I guess the only thing is you don't wanna plant potatoes in the same spot, so maybe dig them up and then know where you wanna put them and then just right when you're doing it, just go ahead and bury them and plant them for next year. Is that crazy or have any of you guys ever tried sowing right when you harvest them for the next season? So basically I'm planting volunteer potatoes for the next year. And then moving on from that bed, I've got quite a few different things in here. From here to here, I have great northern beans and none of those have sprouted yet. But all these guys are black beans and those were black beans from seed I saved last year and they're looking fantastic. Right here I have some zinnias and some more kale. I had two more kale plants here but slugs ate them down to the ground so I don't have them anymore. And then zooming in, I've got some beets that I planted. You can see the slug damage on that one. I did put sluggo around this one and this one to try to prevent any more damage on those guys. Over here we have some peas. These peas are doing fantastic. I'm starting to get some flower. This variety is Alaska Early, the shelling peas, so I'm excited for those. And in here I also have some spinach that's doing pretty well. And then the rest of the bed is just prepped and ready to go and I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna put in here. I think I'm gonna be putting some tomatoes in here. And I think that right there is a volunteer calendula. We're gonna swing around here, and this is my winter summer squash bed. I did have one thing get completely eaten from slugs this week. That was a yellow summer squash. I don't remember the variety, but it's completely dead. They ate a hole right through the stem. So I'm gonna come out here this afternoon and replant that one. Over here I have a butternut squash, and then I planted seeds of more butternut squash. I'm gonna let those vine out through the walkways. I have some volunteer tomatoes all throughout this bed because this was a tomato bed last year. These are yellow summer squash, yellow summer squash, zucchinis, a different variety of zucchini. There's a seed planted there for another variety that hasn't sprouted yet. And then I have some volunteer calendula I'm gonna let grow. That's spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash, and that is a Cinderella pumpkin. So I'm gonna let those guys just grow out into this area. And look, even more mushrooms. We're gonna go backwards just a little bit coming from the spinach and pea bed. I've got my onion bed that's looking fantastic. These right here are the onions I bought from Dixondale Farm. And then these onions here were ones I started from seed and they're starting to grow pretty well. So I'm encouraged by that. And then I did plant a few radishes and this is the little experiment area. I figured I would see if I could grow radishes between some of the onions. One of you guys had the thought that 
you probably don't want to do that because for onions to grow big they don't like weed pressure and you could look at those as weeds to the onions I guess because they're taking up space but those radishes probably are gonna be done in a week or two and so I can pull those up and then the onion should have plenty of room I'm thinking to grow just fine but that's why I just did a little experiment there and then coming around I have a big patch of spinach this spinach is beautiful I don't remember the variety of spinach I planted here it's a different one than I planted over there and I am gonna look that up because I'm definitely gonna plant this one next year because it's grown a lot better coming around here this is my garlic bed my elephant garlic is looking fantastic it's all the way up to my hip it's hard to see in this photo but that garlic is super tall and then I have a couple of volunteer garlics here those were probably just the tiny little garlic heads that fell out of my bowl that I wasn't gonna plant so I'm gonna let those go I have hard neck varieties here and then my soft neck varieties there and then my elephant garlic forgot to mention on this bed I also have planted here and there I have more spaghetti squash and then there and there I have sugar pie pumpkins and I'm gonna let those vine this way and there are onions that I have planted here those are Walla Walla onions and if those get crowded out by the pumpkins then I'm not that worried about it and over here I have more onions I have more Walla Wallas here and there these are some more zinnias I have a calendula there that was something that I saved seed from and so I'm super happy about that and that. I wanna make calendula soap. And then here I have a white marigold that I started from seed. And then right along here, there are weeds it looks like, but the more important thing are my carrots. So I need to go through and weed this bed. And then coming from that bed, we're gonna come over here and I have lettuce here. That is a white marigold that slugs completely ate. So I have to get that out and I'll put something else there. Right along here I have chamomile and then I have a calendula, calendula, zinnia, and zinnia with green onions going along the outside here. So if you watched my pepper planting and tomato planting video, you may notice this is the bed that I planted my peppers in. And why are there no peppers in that bed? Well, I had a really hard time when this happened. I couldn't even come out here and film actually. It took me about a week before I was emotionally ready to come out here and film. I don't know how I missed it, but when I planted these, I planted them at like four, five o'clock in the afternoon. And I checked my weather before I planted out my tomatoes and my peppers. And it wasn't supposed to get below 45 degrees for the foreseeable future. I waited two weeks after my last frost date to plant my tomatoes and my peppers. And as you know, if you watch that video, I put a milk jug over them as like a little greenhouse for my peppers because I thought that they, even at 45, wouldn't want that temperature. So I wanted to give them a little extra protection. Well, the next morning I came out here to check on the chickens before I left for work and I noticed frost as I was walking out here and my heart and gut just sank. I knew, I knew that I lost everything. Even under the milk jugs, the greenhouses, the peppers were frozen and my tomatoes were frozen. And I looked at the weather and it said it was 30 degrees and I don't know how I missed that. I checked the weather, I just, I don't know, I missed it. And I actually put a picture on Instagram. So if you wanna know like real time updates on what I have going on around here, go follow me at Acre Homestead on Instagram because I update there almost every day and i showed a picture of the weather with 30 degrees and you guys were so supportive you knew exactly where my heart was and where my brain was and i lost every single pepper that i planted and every single tomato plant that i planted i was going to make a video on it but i couldn't i was too emotionally upset my husband was super supportive he's like no maybe they'll survive maybe they'll survive no not one of them actually that's not true i had one pepper survive um, but I'm sure that it's stunted. I'm gonna let it go, but I'm sure that it's stunted and it's not gonna really do anything. I waited a couple days, I regrouped, and I started a bunch of tomato plants. I had some very specific varieties that I wanted to try this year that I didn't try last year, and they're varieties that I would not be able to buy at my local nursery or box store. I still should have plenty of time. I'll show you what they're looking like now. They're looking pretty good, but it was pretty devastating, and I like, wanted to give up in that moment I was just like ah I don't know what I'm doing but I looked at the weather so I don't know how I missed it and my sister-in-law she lives not even three minutes away from me 
and her tomato plants survived. And she planted her tomato plants a week and a half before I did, and I was too nervous to plant them out then because I thought it was too early. So I don't know if it's because her plants had been outside and experiencing those lower temperatures, even though I thought I hardened off my tomatoes and peppers well enough. So I don't know if it was because she had them out there for longer and they were more used to that that they survived or if she didn't get a frost because she was in a microclimate or I was in a microclimate I'm not sure but that was devastating and a huge loss but I'm not gonna give up I went ahead yesterday and I bought a whole flat of peppers that I'm gonna be planting out last week I went ahead and picked up a bunch of tomato starts and I got them replanted I didn't film replanting these tomatoes because the wound was still a little fresh so I just got out here and I planted them and I did plant them the same way I planted them in that video. I planted them with a little bit of manure that's in that wheelbarrow, an egg and banana peel. And these tomatoes are looking super awesome. My nasturtiums also died in that frost. So I replanted some nasturtiums. And you'll notice that between the tomatoes, I actually decided to plant some black beans as well. And these are also seed that I saved from last year. If they don't amount to anything, that's gonna be okay. I figured I would just try to maximize my space and see if I can grow something underneath those tomatoes. Otherwise that space would just be wasted space. We'll just see what happens there. And then let's go back to what used to be the pepper bed and what soon will be the pepper bed. I have a nasturtium here and here. I'm envisioning these nasturtiums cascading down along the beds. I didn't grow nasturtiums last year and I really want to grow them this year. So I'm super excited that I've got quite a few nasturtium plants growing throughout the garden. I have some more chamomile here. And then there used to be, or what I thought, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that video, but I sure thought I planted carrots right along the middle of this bed and there's not one carrot that popped up. So I need to look and see, cause I don't remember what variety I thought I planted in here or if I actually planted in this bed, but I was pretty sure I planted carrots in here. If I didn't end up planting carrots in here, I'm gonna go ahead and get some more carrots planted in here, and that way I'll have a succession planting of carrots, because the other three beds that have carrots in them, I planted three weeks ago, I think. So it would be good to get some planted now, and that will kind of extend the carrot harvest. My mom gave me some blue lake pole beans that I need to plant this week. I think I'm gonna plant them this afternoon along this cyclone fence. I'm gonna put chicken wire so the chickens can't get to it, but I thought it would be pretty if I could get those pole beans to grow up along that fence. So coming across to this bed, I've got peas along this side and something ate these peas, but they're starting to grow back. You can see that there's some new shoots coming out of there. So I'm gonna let those just grow and see what happens. I have a few volunteer lettuce plants. This is a volunteer. That's a volunteer and I've got one here and one here. Last year I had lettuce planted along this edge here and I let like six of them go to seed. And so that's where I think those volunteer lettuces came from. I've got another nasturtium here. I have a kale plant, a tomato plant. I'm not gonna let this blender stop me from starting my own seed because Buying starts is expensive. When I bought all those pepper plants, I spent $2.99 per plant and my tomatoes were $2.99 per plant. And so when you have to buy seed and starts, that's really expensive, but I still have tons of seed from that I bought last year. So next year, I'm just gonna start seeds again and try to grow them myself because it really can save you a ton of money if you can get it to work and you don't kill your plants. And I don't plant out the day before the last frost we had. And we haven't had a frost since then, by the way. So I wanna make a note on when our last frost date is. I live in zone 8B, if you're new, and our last frost date is actually March 30th. And I didn't plant those tomatoes and peppers out until April 11th. So I thought I had waited a good few weeks, was good to go, but we did have that frost on April 12th. So <laughs> I missed it by one day, one day. Now back to this bed, I went ahead and I did plant more tomato plants here, these were ones I did start from seed that I didn't actually plant out that day. Thankfully, I didn't plant everything out that I grew. I have two bachelor buttons here. I have another calendula and calendula, two blue curl kale, and then along this area here, I have cilantro. These are carrots in here and a big patch of dill. I'm hoping to have a huge dill harvest. All this dill was volunteer dill. So coming down from the dill patch, we're gonna go to the other bed that I have right here. This is the last raised bed that I have. I have a ton of carrots in here and you can see these were not pelleted carrots. So they're planted pretty tightly. So I'm gonna have to go through here and thin these. 
and it looks like there's a volunteer tomato there. And those ones are actually starting to get some of their own true leaves. And then I have cilantro along the edge here that's growing. And I have my peas along here. And this is the cutest little herb bed. It's looking fantastic. I did make a video on this and I did transplant a few of my parsleys and a couple of them didn't survive, but that's okay. I had three that survived transplant. I have some different types of basil in here. That's a Thai basil and there's lemon basil and some regular basil. I've got a nasturtium, some dill, and how beautiful are those tribes? I just love it. And then we're gonna come down here and we can look at the other herb bed we have. Oh, the sun's coming out, it's beautiful. I've got my strawberry mint here and here, and I started those from seed inside, and they're just looking so good and so cute. My nasturtium looks really great. A few sages that I transplanted, some oregano, and this was a very sad looking sage plant when I put it in here. This was in an area that didn't get hardly any sun, and I wasn't sure if this one was gonna survive, but it looks like it is. And I think what I'm gonna do, because it's so spindly looking and kind of sad looking, I think I'm gonna let these leaves grow a little bit more, and then I'm gonna chop it back because there's new growth down here and I wanna to try to get this bush to kind of bush out a little bit so it's not quite so spindly looking. Coming up from the herb bed, we are gonna go talk about the orchard. This tree last year did not produce any fruit. This is an apple tree and there are buds all over it. So hopefully we get some apples from this tree this year. This apple tree is budding out and looking fantastic. So is this one. Now my pear trees, they are already done budding and they have already started to set their fruit. This is an Asian pear tree and you can see that there's some mini fruits on there already. Coming from the Asian pear tree, around here we've got two fig trees, one here and one here and they are starting to set fruit already. So I made raspberry leaf tea like a week and a half ago I think and it was so good. I can't have any caffeine right now and so I'm on a tea kick. And so I wanna see if I can make some of my own teas this year. And I already did raspberry leaf tea, winner, winner, love it. And I was researching and I guess fig leaves are something you can also make tea of. And it's actually really kind of a delicacy and it's really expensive to buy. But trust me, I'm gonna have plenty of leaves off this tree. This tree is huge, it's massive. It goes all the way up there. And so stay tuned for that if you wanna see some fig leaf tea. I've never had fig leaf tea before. So we are gonna try it and see what it tastes like this year. And then my Bartlett pear tree is starting to set some fruit. You can see right in there. Now this tree does have a fungus. I think this is called something rust and it had it last year and I need to research and figure out what to do with that. It didn't seem to affect the fruit too much. Um, I still got a bunch of pears off it last year, but I wanna try to make sure this tree is nice and healthy for long term. So if you guys have any tips or tricks for me, please leave them down in the comments below. And then let's go talk about my husband's favorite tree, this plum tree. I have a question on this tree for you guys as well. Overall, the tree is looking really healthy and beautiful. It already flowered and set its fruit, but this branch right here died. You can see that there were buds on it, there were flowers on it, and there were leaves on it, and then it just died. And you see how it's all brown and dead as opposed to the rest of the tree looks really lush and beautiful. Can you tell me what I should do with that? Should I cut that limb off now so that it doesn't affect the rest of the tree? Or will that damage the tree because the sap is already running? Should I wait until the winter to cut that limb off? Because you can see it's this limb right here the rest of it looks beautiful and it is setting fruit so that's pretty awesome so that is another question I have for you guys you guys have helped me so much already in the comments and I just want to say thank you I really appreciate that and now we've got my raspberry patch that's looking super lush and great I'm working on mulching this area back here so that's why there's all these ugly cardboard boxes that need to be managed and taken care of but do you see all these new little pups right in here so what I think I'm gonna do is go through and harvest all these pups. I should do it soon because I've been really kind of not sure what to do with these beds here. They've kind of, they have a couple, like there's a raspberry, there's a raspberry, there's a raspberry, and then a lot of it's just really empty and wasted space. And I'm gonna transplant them into these beds because there's all these T-posts. I'm gonna be able to use, there's wire around them too, to try to keep the raspberries straight up. Because if you can see over there, these raspberries are leaning quite a bit and it makes it really hard to harvest the raspberries. So I think it would be nice if I could get those raspberries supported and up using those T-post and wire. And then coming back from this area, we've got the rhubarb that's looking great. I'm not sure why there's only two rhubarb plants here. There, last year there was rhubarb all in here as well. 
I don't know if rhubarb needs to take a season to relax, but that area is looking great. I could actually come out here and harvest a bunch of it. I didn't realize how big it was. I'm gonna make rhubarb barbecue sauce with it. And then these are more raspberries. And then these beds here are looking really sad. I haven't dealt with these at all. But coming around from those beds, I've got some blueberry plants here and here and here, and they've already flowered and are starting to set fruit, which I cannot wait. The blueberries were so good last year and they were one of my husband's favorite snacks. It was one of the most incredible experiences being able to come out here and snack on the blueberries. There was just something super special about coming out to your backyard and eating a snack of blueberries. I wanna say a huge thank you for all your support. I'm blown away by your guys' kindness and support. You guys have been such an encouragement to me and I've learned so much from you guys already and I'm just so enjoying getting to know you guys down in the comments. I see a ton of, oh, we forgot. We almost forgot about the loofah. So this is my loofah trellis. I have two varieties. The variety that I planted here hasn't done anything yet, but look at this. That is a loofah there and there. And hopefully we will be getting some loofahs. One of you guys mentioned that loofahs need 180 days to mature and we should have that here, hopefully. The biggest thing I worry about is they need to dry and we do start, oh, I see another snail. I'm gonna have to kill it. And we do start to get quite a bit of rain in the fall. So hopefully they grow and we get some loofahs. If not, maybe I'll try something else in this arch next year. But I wanna say a huge thank you guys for joining me in my garden. It's been so fun getting to know you. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of what's going on around here, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.